Welcome to Lesson 8 on Reptiles. These are the objectives that we're covering in the unit. And our goals for this lesson are why are reptiles important and what does it mean to adapt? So when we talk about adaptations, what we're talking about are ways that animals and other living organisms have changed over a long period of time in order to survive. So at one point in time, a giraffe did not have a very long neck. It didn't need it. It was able to reach leaves and other food um, from the branches that hung very low on the plants. As the plants changed, the leaves grew higher, and so an adaptation that occurred over a very long period of time was that the necks increased on um, the giraffes, and the giraffes with the longer necks survived, and the giraffes with the shorter necks did not. Now sometimes the adaptations are are physical traits or behavioral traits. <clears throat> so when we look at the giraffe, the long neck giraffe is a physical trait, okay? A bird that flies south for the winter, that's an adaptation. That's telling us that the birds need the warmer weather um, so they can find a food source. That would be behavior. Porcupine, they have sharp, stiff quills to be able to ident um, defend itself. That would be an example of a physical adaptation. Chipmunks hibernate in the winter, so they don't have to worry about finding food. That would be behavioral. A dolphin, the tail of the dolphin helps the dolphin swim, and that would be a physical trait and a physical adaptation. Now, as we talk about reptiles, the types of animals that we're talking about are snakes, lizards, turtles, alligators, and crocodiles. This is where you should really be taking some notes. We will not be covering this in class. What we will be doing is we'll be doing an activity together. So the animals that are included in the reptile family are snakes, lizards, turtles, and alligators and crocodiles. Reptiles have some characteristics. They are ectothermic, they are vertebrates, they have lungs, most of them lay eggs, and they conserve water through their skin, kidneys, and also in their eggs. We know that reptiles have been living on the earth for a very long time. They've been able to survive for such a long time because of their traits, both, both their physical traits and their behavioral traits. We know that um, because reptiles need to live close to water, um, that because their bodies aren't always able to keep water um, inside because they're because they're not able to regulate that okay so they conserve this water through their skin their kidneys and their eggs now one of the misconceptions about reptiles is that they're slimy they really aren't they their skin is very scaly and that scaly skin protects the reptiles and helps to keep that water in their bodies Okay, it's really important that um, that that they're able to keep their their water inside their bodies, um, and um, the the reptiles, their kidneys, are able to um, are to work to conserve water by um, concentrating their urine so they don't urinate as much which also helps conserve water. And then we look at eggs. And you're probably like, Mrs. Tratner, like really? An egg conserves water? Well, it does. So here is another way that reptiles are able to conserve water. Inside the egg, okay, so there's the shell. And then 
the egg has these different parts. There's a fluid within the membrane that's able to keep that little baby reptile moist. And that little baby reptile, when it's inside the egg, is called an embryo. The embryo's wastes are then collected inside of another membrane, okay? And then the shell is there to protect that embryo and it allows um, oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass through, okay? And um, the yolk is where the embryo is able to get its energy and its food. And it's really important that um, that the reptile eggs are designed like this because it helps make sure that the water is not lost, that these eggs don't dry out, and that the baby reptile dies. Other animals that are part of the reptile family here are snakes. And here are some characteristics of snakes. One thing to keep in mind is that some are venomous, which means that they're poisonous, but those kinds of snakes do not go out and try to hunt people down. Venomous snakes and other snakes do not want to eat people. People are way too big. They would rather eat something that's smaller in size like birds, small birds, or mice, things like that. Snakes have one lung, they do not have any external ears, and they don't have any eyelids. Lizards also have thick, scaly, dry skin. They lay eggs. They have, they have a skin that overlaps with scales. They have, two ex they have external ears, they have movable eyelids, and they have two lungs. Alligators and crocodiles also have thick, scaly skin, and it's dry. They lay eggs, they're carnivores, and they will care for their young up to a year. And lastly, turtles, they live in the water, okay? A tortoise will live on land. Their shell is their backbone and ribs. Sea turtles have lungs and lay eggs on land. So sea turtles, even though they swim in the water, they come to the surface to breathe. Some turtles are carnivores and some are herbivores. So these are some notes on reptiles and you should take the notes and also read the online lesson. When you come to class, we are going to do um, an activity in class about reptiles. So I am looking forward to our time learning more about reptiles.